Josh, is it is it recording? Well, you could have you could have said it was recording. Hiya, it's Sally here. <laughs> Just a quick one, just a quick one. You can now rate Say Your Mind podcasts on Spotify as well as Apple Podcasts. So if you can, do make sure that you do both. I know that some of you are just a little bit lazy. Oh, I can't say that. But why? Why, why is it right? Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> now for the urban intro music. <laughs> it's the Ben's Brunani woman. It's baby boys, baby girls. You need to hear this. Baby, sit down, sit down. Receive this realness. Make sure your cup's ready for the tea. We are go sippy here. Oh, Hard time scrolling for your long shorts. Oh, you might learn something you never know. Oh, Could let you find. And she's one of a kind. Don't say you mind. Say you mind. going to poison you for all of the shit that you've put me through. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's me, Kalechi, and a rascal up place to be. You're back. Welcome back. And if this is your first time, well, whoop de doo you know? Um, Yeah, you're listening to SYM, officially known as Say Your Mind, unofficially known as What What? That's right, Suck Your Mum. And um, yeah, you know, now I'm back to visuals. But let's see how I go because mm, I'm trying to, the way that I'm trying to record it, I just feel like yeah, I'm not sure, but we'll see. We'll see. Either the visuals make it to you this week or they make it to you another week. And I just scrap this particular visual and then work out the kinks because, you know, Mercury is about to go into marmalade and into micro braids. So of all the times to decide to start recording the podcast, it's now um, when it decides that it wants to be um, Mercury retrograde. But what can we do? You know, we move, we move. So, um, yeah, another week. Uh, and yeah, I've been doing bits. The main thing I want to say is um, do, 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 prepare yourself. The next live show, the last live show of this year, the second live show of this year, will be on Sunday, 25th of September. Sunday, 25th of September will be the next live show. God help us all. Um, bigger, hopefully, hopefully better, but definitely bigger. So, um, yeah, more notes to come in due course. Um, you know, I'll be giving you more announcements as the weeks go on, but that is the main thing that you need to know that the live show will be on the 25th of September, Sunday, 25th of September. The show will start promptly at 6 p.m. Um, it's going to be a vibe. It's going to be a vibe. Um, so I think next week I'll give you more details. The week after that, I will give you even more details, but prepare yourself because the tickets go on sale fairly soon, fairly soon. So be prepared for all of that. Um, yes. So that was one of the main things I've been watching. What's that show called? Uh, love life, love life really good. I'm on season one at the moment. Really, really enjoying it. Everybody says that season two is incredible. So I'm looking forward to season two, but season one, I've watched like what, six episodes in one day, seven episodes in one day. I'm truly enjoying it. I really like the writing. I think that it's honest and it's relatable. Um, yeah, enjoying it, enjoying it. Uh, what else have I been doing? Let me see. Uh, I've just been up to bits in it. Oh, I went to go and watch for black boys who have, uh, what's it for black boys who have considered suicide when the hue gets too heavy. Uh, I think it was inspired by, uh, for black girls who, um, have considered suicide. What is it? When the rainbow's not enough. Is that what it's called? By Ntozaki Shanga. Um, yeah. Uh, it's really good. It's good. You know, I think that I, I really like the actors. I thought that the actors were really good. Um, the subjects matter. 
really interesting. I went to see it Saturday just gone. So at the end of the run, I think they had two more performances after the one that I saw. So yeah, they were wrapping it up and I, I could tell that they'd been on a real journey with the show. Um, all brilliant, fantastic, fantastic actors in, you know, in different ways. Like I enjoyed each of them in different ways. I would say that based on the hype of like reading about it in the papers and things like that, um, it wasn't what I expected, but at the same time, I feel like I'm mature enough and I feel like I've grown enough to understand, like sometimes we need to understand that certain subject matters. Um, I don't feel like I am the intended audience, basically. That's what I would say. I don't feel like I'm the intended audience, but I enjoyed it. I feel like if I were to have been the intended audience, it would have just like been, you know, on another level. But I still think that it was a great show and well deserving of being put on, you know, at the Royal Court and all of the things there. Like, you know, we deserve things, you know, and black men, black boys deserve to have spaces to tell their stories. And, um, it was really, really nice. It was really, really nice to look around the audience and see so many young black men there. And then the smile project as well was up, you know, in and around the, uh, the theater at the Royal court theater as well. And that was really cool. The night before that, I think it was the night before that. Yeah, it was the night before that I went to see Mary's Seacole. It was part of, it was, it was showing at the, what's it? The Donmar warehouse in Covert Garden. So yeah, went to go and see that. Um, Kayla Miekler, M- 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 is that her? M- M- She's really, really good. In the, the whole cast in um, Mary's sequel, um, they were really good. Really, really good. Um, interesting bits. I would say that my favorite part, because a lot of it I found rather disorientating. Um, but there's a monologue that is done by one of the actresses and it's phenomenal. Like the writing that that's when the writing jumped out the right, like, Ooh, that's when the writing jumped out. Um, it was that I enjoyed that aspect. It was, uh, I went to go and see it because there was an exhibition on called we black women, um, where black British, uh, British actresses, I think they were asked to, um, you know, choose somebody who inspires them, another black woman, black British woman who inspires them and the photo exhibition or, you know, the portraits were with, you know, each of them and, you know, each of the subjects and the person that they'd chosen. Um, and that was cool. Like the whole like story behind that was cool as well. I was just happy to pass through support the thing, but, um, yeah, I really enjoyed watching Mary Seacall and I enjoyed watching for black boys. Um, and I'm just glad that I'm back in my theatre bag, you know, my theatre going bag. I've really missed going to the theatre. So it's nice to just like be able to go and watch things and pretty much get my life. But like because I'm recording so, so late, it's almost 1am. My God, I would have thought like the first video back, um, you know, like the first video, because I haven't recorded a podcast like episode via, you know, visually for ages. I thought I was going to, you know, put together a look. No, 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 no. Because Miami Grand Prix decided to just be at 8.30 PM UK time. So there is no look. There is just me in my Kemi Telford uh, jumper that says queen on it. And um, I'm holding a cushion that the guys from Pod Bible got me. Um, So I'm holding that. And yeah. And I, I, you know, at least I made sure that my hands aren't dry in it for when I've got to hold up the tarot cards. So you can't win everything. Do you get me? Like, just, you know, you win some, you lose some. It is what it is. Uh, But anyway, let's get to the tarot. I actually didn't pick out a tarot question because, oh, when I tell you this last weekend has just been so overwhelming for me, just a wealth of emotions. don't know what transits because when I was looking at the transits I was just like these are meant to be like just like nice chilled transits but actually no sometimes you know they interact with each other and they just throw you and you just feel all of the things but I think one of the things that did come up for me was more like you know 
as I, oh, there's so many tarot questions, fucking hell. As I go about doing all the things that I'm doing to kind of build this quote unquote legacy, I think that people think I'm too busy to like come to things. So you see people having um like a special thing and you're like, rah, I wasn't invited. And you're like, yeah, but at the same time, you're just out here. So, you know, it is what it is. Or maybe they just don't like me. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it could be that as well. Um, but, you know, there are people I know, but um, it is what it is. Um, let me, oh, this is a straw of the week. That's from ages ago. Sorry, the person who wrote that in. Oh, and there's, um, what's this? Um, who are you submitting? Um, okay, I, could, I think I could come back to that for show your magnificence. I should really have just like chosen things before jumping on the mic. But like I said, life has been wild. What have I got here? Let's choose this person. It says, Hi Kalechi, I've seen your tweets before on Twitter and today I listened to your podcast from 59 minutes onwards. It was very interesting, kind of reminded me of the woman I call my Parisian aunt. She is a black woman of Nigerian origin and we used to work together in Paris. She, like you, is also very spiritual, but not into tarot. So I'd be interested in your tarot thoughts. I'm planning on making some big moves this summer. I'm interested in a private consultation. Oh, I shouldn't have picked that one because that's got nothing to do with me. I'm not doing private consultations. I'm not doing private readings at the moment, but you know, read that out. So, um, but I did do a reading on, um, Instagram live the other day for some people that could have also played with my energy as well, because channeling messages is so tiring. So, so tiring. And when I finish reading, I just, usually I have like a ritual, a whole cleansing ritual that I do after doing readings for people, especially after doing readings for people back to back to back. And I didn't, because I had to go and do something. So trust and believe the next day, of course, I was just like, whoa, all of these emotions. And, you know, you have to be careful. It's such a fine, 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 fine art when you're doing things like this. You have to be very spiritually like hygienic. You do. So that taught me not to play about, you know? Um, Oh, we've got an update here. What's this update for Tara? It says, hello, Kelechi. I don't know what it is with me and Mondays, but I find myself writing to you. I guess it's because your words fill me with the ginger I need to start to get started on my week. And I carry that energy into my emails to you. The Tara reading was so spot on and resonated so hard that it's been echoing in my spirit for weeks. I lost my stepdad, who was the father figure that raised me the day after I got my first job. I believe he held on to ensure that I was done with school and could sustain myself and my mum before he finally released the grip he had on life. And I think ever since that loss, um, that loss, I felt the ticking of the clock somewhere at the back of my mind, like I could die at any moment with the regret of not having accomplished um everything I wanted to compared to my friends and classmates who seemingly have gotten their dream lives. As someone who is driven by accomplishments and doing things, the tarot reading was the screeching of the brakes and reminder to breathe and live that I desperately needed to hear. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me that I do have time, that I'm young, that in my rush to do things, um, a baby girl has taken the time to really enjoy the life I currently have. No, the baby girl, a baby girl hasn't taken the time to really enjoy the life I currently have. I'm bringing out little Noria to play, giving her permission to laugh and be silly and be free. And it's all thanks to you. And to the Nixels who had the audacity, effrontery and the goal to be absolute dickheads, my Ibadan born Esson ass um, wants you to know, Ori Baba Babanyi Ukwe, Ori Ranu, Alai Nikonshe, Asiwi, Olori Buruku, Koni Dafwe, wow this is a lot this is heavy duty um eshimate that's true they definitely will thunder fire you your ancestors will reset your clock you know what i love that the spirits will what will was you slap left and right trouble they sleep yanga carry chest go me tam no be madness to do na so idiot nikon poop <laughs> anyway, back to correct person, sending you all the love and warmth and gratitude. Thank you for that. 
Um, Oh, and you were absolutely right about my Leo placements with my sun, Venus and Jupiter all in Leo. I felt the warmth in that reading. Oh, and my Virgo moon and Capricorn rising says hi as well. Look at me. I just be coming through. Oh my God. I just be coming through with like a word. Oh my God. Um, Okay, no, let's actually get to a tarot reading because I don't want to sleep in this space. I don't want to just be here forever and ever. Um, I would like to see my yard. Um, I mean, somebody that had sense would have actually had a nap in the daytime, but I'm not really a daytime napper. Oh, and you know what? I was looking into like human design and stuff, like just trying to read up on it. I like to like know things that other people know. Um, and it's interesting because it said that for my digestive kind of system, it's better for me to eat in the evening. What's mad is that I actually prefer eating in the evening. I am in my absolute bag. Like people who are close to me will notice that I usually ask for us to go for dinners as opposed to like going for lunch or going for breakfast. Like dinner is my bag. (gasps) So when I read that, I was like, yeah, because the other day I was speaking to um, a friend and, you know, they were well-meaning. They're like really lovely. And um, we we're talking and stuff. And they were like, oh, I noticed that you eat um, at night um, or quite late at night or something. Um, I'm sure it wasn't like a judgment call, but, you know, they're trying to help or whatever. But I was just like, I was a bit irritated because I was just like, yeah, I prefer eating in the evening because or, you know, later on in the evening because I'm usually up very late. So yeah um so then when I'm looking into human design and it's like yeah you function best when you eat um at night just try to have like very very light things maybe smoothies or juices in the daytime and then when the sun sets then have your meal and see how you get on with that so I'm gonna try that you know but I love that I love that intuitively I know my body and like we can all read science in it like a lot of us, especially when you're fitness heads and or your personal trainers or fitness professionals or whatever, a lot of us know what we've read, right? We all, we've all read the same thing. Don't eat this time. Don't. But we also have to understand that everybody's body is not that other person's body. Like everybody's body is different in it. And I've always known what works better for me. Um, I mean, I didn't even need human design to confirm it, but just seeing that just felt so affirming. Like, let me live my life. I just want to live. However that boy sings it. I just want to live. I'm sorry. I wasn't being disrespectful. I love your so I love your voice, but um that's clearly my rendition. Anyway, um I don't know if I already said it in this one because I started the recording again because it was moving mad before. But basically, I'm still setting up the office space. Like I've got my like bits behind me, looks cute or whatever. But I want like some like little like shelves on either side of me, like them tiered standing kind of shelves or like, I don't know if they're called maybe like a tall table, but there'll be like three to four tiers, right? Um, So I could put my tarot cards on there. I could put like this cushion on there. Um, And, you know, like just bits. I just need space. I just, you know, I want space to like, I have space, but basically I want a way to organize the space. So if you know of any cute things, preferably gold or black, that's tall that I can stack things on, that would be really cool. You can email it to me on sym at kalechiokar4.com. And also if you want to send through um, your tarot questions, you can send it to uh, sym at kalechiokar4.com. All right. This is the letter. Dear Kalechi, woo. I just heard the latest SYM episode. Madame, I'm a mature baby girl living in the United States who came to to your work when I, um, who came to your work when I saw a comment you made on one of um, Ahime Aura's Instagram posts. That's my baby girl. I love Ahime. I've been in a yucky place for the past few months. I have been deeply over my job since December. Every month, every week, almost every day, I slough off into some fuck shit. For example, I have slept when I want to go back to sleep instead of feeling guilty and lazy uh, because I'm obviously exhausted, realizing I mustn't force myself to work when I feel fatigued and ill. Owning that I just, um, owning that I just be right about shit. For example, the past 15 years, 
I've thought that work, at least the way it is in the US, is seriously fucked up and the utter worst. I lock up though, because um, I realize there is no one thing or dream job for me because I have lots of interests. I don't do well with an overwhelming number of choices, but I do get out of my, um, but I do need to get out of my current job and genuinely horrid place I live. I moved to the place where I live for my current job nearly five years ago. I have not been able to form friendships here. I feel very lonely and abandoned by the good friends I had where I used to live. I feel shame for being lonely, especially since I am a woman. As I mentioned, I'm a mature baby girl, middle aged to be exact. I've never been in love. I also feel very ashamed of this. How do I find love and community and get the fuck up um, out of the hell on earth I currently live in auspiciously? I've got quite a bit going on issues wise and I'm linking up with a therapist next month, inshallah. I'm a sidereal uh, Leo sun, Libra rising and Capricorn moon. Mm. Sincerely yours slowly but surely for this baby girl. Okay. All right. So let's look into it. Love and community. What the spirit, let me put this cushion down now because I'm doing a lot. What does spirit have for love and community? I just won't leave here. No, stop doing that. <laughs> um, you would not believe that it's past 1 a.m. and I'm laughing like a jackal. That's what the parents like to tell you. Why are you laughing like a jackal? Why are you laughing like a hyena? But let people laugh, man. Life is too short. Um, spirit. A baby girl wants to know about community and oh, okay, community and love. Oh, oh, okay, all right, all right. Let's see what's the third card spirit for this message about community and love. How to find community and love. Mm, 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 mm. Community and love, a third card, spirit. Oh, oh, that just flew on out of here. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so we've got the five of cups, we've got the six of pentacles, we've got the three of swords, and we've got the ten of cups. That came out in reverse, but I feel like I can read it whichever way that. Um, I want to read it And the great thing about now being back on video Is I can show you the card So we've got the You can see it there The five of cups She's I'm using the Afro goddess Tarot Arcanus deck um, By Andrea Fertick um, So you see the figure She's got a big honk-a-tonk She's got a big booty Sorry, I'm so sorry But um, in fact, a lot of the characters in this Have really nice bums Anyway um, so she's sad You know, she's sad She's looking at the spilled cups I'm just moving that a bit closer She's looking at the spilled cups And then she's got two cups behind her That still are standing upright But she's not noticing them Then we've got the six of pentacles Where um, we've got this woman And she's um, got scales in her hand You can see that she's giving to people She's wearing a green dress um, and there are two other women on their knees And she's standing Then we've got the three of swords Heartbreak This is the heartbreak hotel This is the All I want to want was some of your time Instead you took Kevin Samuels from this earth So sorry Um, Ten of cups This is the one that came out in reverse Um really nice rainbows and cups and children and love. Mm. All right. So when you're asking about um, community and love, the first card coming up as the five of cups is saying that, well, first I'm looking at the bridge and the green tree that's over the bridge. And it's saying that the opportunities that you're looking for require you to leave where you currently are. You have to go because there's nothing there for you. Like the community that you seek, everything that you're looking for is currently literally not in the place where you are. There's nothing there that's going to nurture you. But at the same time, 
you know already that there's nothing there that's going to nurture you, but you don't want to turn around and leave. You don't want to turn around and go because something, there's something about the familiarity of the trauma that you find enticing, that you find somewhat comforting. And that, you know, is something that needs to be addressed. Sometimes we become so, it's like we don't talk enough about how sometimes sadness can be your best friend. Like sadness is with you so much throughout so many things that happen in life that like you, you know, you know it so intimately, you feel more familiar with that than, than, you know, joy, than, uh, you know, uh, peace. Sadness just feels familiar. And so when other options are offered, like, oh, maybe you should try this instead. It's like, well, no, because I know sadness well and sadness and I get on and I just know what to expect. And this is the vibe that this is giving, but we've got the six of pentacles here to say that there is so much more of you to give like, um, and it feels like a, almost like a stern thing from spirit in that because you're so, um, familiar with sadness, there have been opportunities for you to be in community. There have been opportunities for you to kind of like make friends or to maybe go on a date, but you don't feel like you're worthy of receiving so you don't receive it. Like somebody will be like, oh, do you want to go for lunch? And you're like, mm, no, because I don't feel comfortable with them watching me eat. Something like that. It always comes back to, oh, there's an insecurity that you have that won't allow you to do the thing that they are asking you to come and do. And then you're like, rah, why haven't I got any friends? And it's like, because every time somebody wants to be your friend, you think about a reason why you're not deserving of friendship. So, you know, the moving away is maybe a good thing because it allows you to reinvent yourself um, and, you know, to choose who you are now going to be. That's the vibe that I get from this. Like you, you can choose who you get to be in the next life as in the next life that you're moving into. Um, And, you know, watching this uh, character in a five of cups, wearing her all black with the train on the end and, and, um, and crying because of the spill, the three spilled cups makes me think that like, yeah, grieve the lives that you've tried to live that haven't turned out the way that you want. But going into your next life, you've got to decide who is it that you want to be and what kind of life do you want to have? Because, you know, I see in the 10 of um, cups that it is the idea of like wanting stability, wanting love, wanting a family feels like here. But then we've got the three of swords right in between that. So you've got the six of pentacles, but before we can get to the 10 of cups, we've got the three of swords right in the middle, which is saying that the, what you're scared of is heartbreak. But fam, all of us have taken a risk. All of us are taking a risk out here. No one, none of us know where our friendships are going to go. None of us know where our romantic relationships are going to go, whether married or otherwise or whatever. Like none of us know how this is going to go. And anybody who says that they do, you know, well, good on them. And it maybe they've just got it figured out. But the likelihood is more time anyone that says that they do, or a lot of people that say that they do, they're lying or they're telling themselves that because they want to make themselves feel better. The reality is that life feels like the biggest kind of chaos. It's beautiful in its chaotic nature and there's a method to its madness. I know that, but sometimes we just don't know how life is going to go. We just hope that it works out for the, you know, the highest good of all. So if the reason that you are like, oh, I don't want to make friends or I'm scared of making friends and I'm scared of being in a relationship, I'm scared of finding community in case they don't think I'm good enough to be part of their community and then I'll be heartbroken. I'm heartbroken uh, uh, without your love, heartbroken. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. It was just in my bones. I had to. Whatever happened to niche? That was a whole genre of music, wasn't it? After like garage, we had like this whole like niche vibe. Don't know what happened to that. Um, but yeah, um, don't be scared of heartbreak. 
um, and, you know, thinking about community and thinking, oh my God, then I won't be um, accepted or whatever. You are enough. You are enough. And, you know, heartbreak is shit. It is shit. But the whole point of having a heart is to let it pump, let it burn. Don't let it burn. That sounds like an STI. Um, but it's because we want the heart to beat. That's the whole point of having the heart. Give it something to beat for, you know. Keep bleeding, I keep, keep bleeding of love. So glad my period is over. Um, Sorry. Sorry. There was absolutely no need for that. But I just, I go where my spirit takes me. I pray that that answered your question. I keep it lighthearted for you specifically because I can see this five of cups here and I can see what's happening with the grief and all of that. But, you know, the 10 of cups is at the end of the deck, which says that you are going to have the things that you want to have. But for you to get there, you have to cross the bridge of not fearing heartbreak. You have to cross the bridge of not fearing who you are capable of being and being open to just creating a new life. Like this is your next life. Who do you want to be? Go and be that, that person that is deserving of love. I love that you're saying that you're, you know, going, you know, setting up therapy and things like that. Maybe through therapy, working out what that, who that person is, what do they like? What do they, you know, what do they aspire for? Um, And to like, yeah, you've got so many interests, like what interests will they want to, or which um, of your interests do will they want to focus on like pardon me which combination of those interests will they want to focus on you can do that you can do that like we can do that we are not trees we can move and even sometimes I think trees move I could be wrong but I don't care like we can move so go explore be who you want to be I can be, I go, I can't, I know, I can't be what I want to be. But probably I heard that from, for black boys, because that was, they chose quite good music in that. Um, so yeah, I pray that that resonates with you, sending you all the love. Um, oops, let's uh, look at Share Your Magnificence. I've already got my Share Your Magnificence, but let's see. I saw somebody a little while back, didn't I? Oh, here we go. Dear Kelechi, I trust you are well. I recently stumbled upon your podcast. All of you are kind of new, in it? Anyway, I recently stumbled upon your podcast and after listening to episode 194, best believe I went all the way back to one. Start back at one. What's that song? It's undeniable. Hey, that we should be together. Boy. It's unbelievable that I used to say that I fall never. Hey, I don't need to know. Brian McKnight. That's it. I tell you I'm for real. I things in life that will repeat. That's it. Yeah, one. You're like a dream come true. Cuts two. Ooh, and wanna be. With you free Cause it's plain to see That you're the only one for me And four And we're going to one, two, three And five You can find up with me If ever I believe my work is done Then I'll start back at one He does a different run But you know Being Brian McKnight We're not on the same level If I'd had his vocal coach and if I didn't hurt my knee when I was playing football when I was 15, I would be able to sing that way too. So don't be judgmental. Anyway, anyway, um, back to this letter. I keep getting sidetracked. Um, I recently stumbled upon your podcast and after listening to episode 194, best believe I went all the way back to one and I am working my way through. I really, um, I've really been working uh, on myself no, I've really been working my self-appreciation. And so with that in mind, I've really been working on my self-appreciation, I think it was going to say. And so with that in mind, I'd like to submit myself for Share Your Magnificence. Go to Um, I'm a 20-year-old baby girl from London and currently I'm studying to be an actress. 
After being very negatively affected by the Grenfell fire back in 2017, I was graced by God to have been accepted to the Brit school. Oh my babe, you went to the Brit school too, gang gang. Um, then having gone to, uh, gone on to arts ed. Wow. Why are you living my life? I applied to arts ed for my uh, master's and I got in, but I couldn't get a scholarship. So I couldn't go. Um, And now training on the CDT course at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. It's only by God's grace and hard work and not letting the negatives in life um, take me out that I'm here today. I also am a beautiful, dark skinned, charismatic, bubbly and all round talented human being spreading good vibes and laughter wherever I go. I love to help people, but I'm learning to set boundaries and I've never felt more powerful. It's not everybody that I should be out here giving my yes to, not me being exhausted because of someone else's issue. Bigging myself up because I deserve to love all that is me and all that's within me. Wishing you a great week. Aww. Two slaps on your chest. I love that. You sent that a little while ago, but I'm glad that I'm reading it now. Well, a couple of weeks ago. I'm glad I'm reading it now because I feel like I also needed that message. So two slaps on your chest for being magnificent and and for bigging up yourself. I feel like that's something that we do need to do more of. I don't like when people are like, oh my God, I'm going to do a shameless plug. Oh my God, I'm, do, I'm going to do a bit of self-promotion, right? Big yourself up because if you don't big yourself up, who the hell is going to do it for you? There are way too many people out here who are trying to pretend that you're not saucy, that you're not paying. So why make their job easier by not proclaiming that you're paying. Like the tongue is powerful. You've got to speak pengness over your own life. You've got to, as I raise my hand forward towards you right now, I say pengness, arise, pengness, wake up, stand up. Let your pengness shine. This little peng of mine, hey, hey, I'm gonna let it shine. Mm. Mm, this little pang of mine Oh, I'm gonna let it shine Hey, hey, this little pang of mine Hey, I'm gonna let it shine Cause I'm fine, cause I'm fine Cause I'm fine Wow, spirit giving me endless talent What will I do with it? But anyway, back to you, baby girl. That is wonderful. Like, I am so, so proud of you. Look at you going to all of the acting things. Yes. When I'm in my director bag, I will come and find you and book you because you are clearly what? Talented. And don't worry, Thunder will fire all of those motherfuckers that were meant to have done their jobs during Grenfell and they did not do it. And they were lying in our faces. I'm so thankful that you're able to build a life even after such a tragedy. I'm sending you all of the love and I'm sending you all of the great vibes. Going from one amazing actress that we've just read about to an amazing actor. Um, so I wanted to big up Chuti and Chuti um, for the fact that he is now the first Doctor Who, like the first black um, Doctor Who. I think that that's absolutely amazing. Now, you know, we had... Um, didn't we have like we had a black woman, right? What because you know, I don't follow um I don't follow Doctor Who. It's not my thing. I mean, it's gonna be my thing now because um Chuty uh Gatwa, he booked it, so of course it's gonna be my thing now. But um I swear there was a black woman, Martine something, that played Or was she like Doctor Who in another time span? I don't know how you lot's time spans have been working, but I just think that it's brilliant. Anyway, it says here, uh, Nchuti Gatwa to replace, and if you don't know who he is, he is um, Eric from Sex Education. Go on, Detty Pig. That's him. He's great. Um, Nchuti will take over from Jodie Whittaker as the Time Lord in Doctor Who, the BBC has announced. The 29-year-old will become the 14th Doctor on the popular BBC show after Whittaker announced last July she would be leaving the role. 
The Scottish actor who was born in Rwanda started uh, starred as Eric Effiong in Netflix hugely popular Sex Education about the socially awkward high school student Otis um, as Asia is it as a Butterfield and his sex therapist mother Gillian Anderson um, well Jean Gillian Anderson he will become the first black actor to play the title role full time okay full time yeah that's it because I was just like no I swear I've seen another black um, Doctor Who. Um, Joe Martin made a guest appearance as a previously unknown version of the doctor hiding in earth disguised as a human tour guide. Exactly. Joe Martin. That is the black woman that I remember. Um, Russell T Davies, who will return in the next series of Doctor Who as showrunner after he initially helmed the 21st century revival of the show from 2005 to 2009. In a statement on the official Doctor Who website, Nchuti said, there aren't quite the words to describe how I'm feeling. A mix of deeply honoured, beyond excited, and of course, a little bit scared. This role and show means so much to so many around the world, including myself and each one of my incredibly talented predecessors has handled that unique responsibility and privilege with the utmost care. I will endeavour my utmost to do the same. Russell T. Davis is almost as iconic as the doctor himself and being able to work with him is a dream come true. His writing is dynamic, exciting, incredibly intelligent and fizzing with danger. Davis said, the future is here and it's in duty. Um, Sometimes talent walks through the door and it's so bright and bold and brilliant. I just stand back in awe and stand, um, thank my lucky stars. And duty dazzled us, seized hold of the doctor and owned those TARDIS keys in seconds. It's an honour to work with him and a who I can't wait to get started. Whitaker's Doctor will be seen in one more episode expected to air in autumn this year to coincide with the centenary um, of the BBC. She was the first woman to play the role on an ongoing basis. It was a move that initially delivered a 10 year ratings high, but which also courted controversy with some fans who felt the character should always be a man and even led to one conservative MP in parliament saying it had deprived boys of a role model and contribute um, and contributed the, uh, to them turning to crime. Pussy Clark. When Gatwa starts um, his tenure in the TARDIS, Doctor Who will not be produced in-house by the BBC, but by Bad Wolf Productions, a company set up by the executives, Julie Gardner and Jane Trantner. Both previously worked on Doctor Who. The company is majority owned by Sony and has previously produced TV series, including A Discovery of Witches. Yes, because a, a Discovery of Witches was, was great. Um, his Dark Materials and I Hate Susie. Gatwa will be known by, fi- by fans as the 14th Doctor, despite the numbering of the actors playing Doctor Who getting increasingly jumbled over the years. While it was quite simple to count the Doctors in the show's initial 1960s and 70s heyday, John Hurt appeared as the mysterious war doctor in 2013 for the show's 50th anniversary and Martin um, made her debut as the fugitive doctor in, 20, um, in 2020. To further confuse matters, both Richard um, Herndl in 1983 and David Bradley in 2017 have played on-screen versions of the first Doctor, originally portrayed by William Hartnell when the series began in 1963. Whitaker's current companions, John Bishop as Dan and Mandip Gill as Yaz, will also be replaced in an all-new 2023 restart for the show. Of her um, character's exit, Jill said, I think it, or is it Gill, said, I think just like me, I think just like me, just like my character, there'll be lots of tears, but um, I loved where it ended up. Upon her announcement when she uh, that she was leaving the role, Whitaker described it as the best job I've ever had, saying, I don't think I'll ever be able to express what the role has given me. I'll carry the doctor and the lessons I've learned forever. That's really beautiful. So that was written by, I'm just reading a Guardian article, by the way, by Martin Bellum, I think his name is, that wrote that. Um, thanks for the information, Martin. Good on ya. Good job. Um, well done, Nchuti. Two slaps on your chest. That is a major, 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 major thing that you're doing. Yeah, that was my Scottish accent. Um, but we're going to move on from that. That felt very wrong um, on my part. I lack skills, clearly. But no, that's an amazing achievement. Big up um, Joe Martin. 
who was like, um, who played, you know, her version and, and Chusey's coming full time to come and do the thing in that time traveling phone box. I don't know anything about it. I saw two hearts and a blue square and people were like, oh no, it's because Doctor Who has two hearts and blue, that blue box is meant to represent TARDIS. And da, da, da. I was like, you are telling me too much. But thank you for the information. So I'm happy for him. I'm glad that this is a thing that is happening. And, um, you know, two slaps on your chest, big up yourself. Like that is, that's amazing. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, I love to see castings like that. I love to see a director react or a showrunner react in that way. Like that somebody walks in and you're like, that's my guy. That is the person. That is the person to play this role. Lord, I see what you're doing for others. Please do my own. It is done, my child. Thank you so much, babes. Anyway, um, yeah, so those are the, you know, magnificences, I guess, for uh, this week. Um, what else is there? No, those are all my magnificences. All right, cool. So I will then big up the first of this week's show sponsors who are Better Help, I believe. Yes, Better Help um, up in the place. Um, it's so weird now, you know, when I first, when I was first doing the video version of the podcast, I don't think I had any sponsors. Well, not like long-term sponsors. And now I'm doing the ad reads and it's to the video as well. I feel like I need to now do a whole production and just like cut and come back in and be like, do you struggle with your mental health? Well, better help. But no, no. Anyway, so People don't always realize that physical symptoms like headaches, teeth grinding, and even digestive issues can be indicators of stress. And let's not forget about doom scrolling, sleeping too little, sleeping too much, under eating and overeating. Um, Well, look at me. I'm here clearly not sleeping because I've got to record this. Otherwise I'd be under stress. So it is what it is. Anyway, stress shows up in all kinds of ways. And in a world that's telling you to do more, sleep less and grind all the time. Here is your reminder to take care of yourself. Do less and maybe try some therapy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone and even live chat um, sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. So give it a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. Say Your Mind listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash your mind. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com forward slash your mind. That's 10% off. So go and get yourself involved, especially if you've written in and you're saying that you want to, well, I think our baby girl has already sorted therapy. But if you are listening to that tarot and you're like, you know what, that hit, that slaps and you're looking into therapy, do it, do it. And also always remember that therapy, it's like dating. Like you might not always stick with the person that you first meet. You know, you've got to be open to that. You can't just be like, oh, well, I tried one person and I didn't really get on with them. So therapy's not for me. Like if, and better help, I think is good for that as well. Like if you're not feeling them, if it's not working, you can always change your therapist. So just, you know, bear that in mind bear that in mind and and give it a try until you find that person. Because when you do find that person, it just flows so much more easily. And so when you have the very, very hard sessions, the things that feel so grueling to talk about, at least you're talking about it with somebody that you get on with. So, um, yeah, I hope that that helps. Anyway, that was nice and positive. Let's get into some, um, tomfoolery. Uh, let's do that. So let's get into, so you mad. So my first story on So You Mad, um, I saw that Ray J was saying some stuff. He's basically said that he's over the Kartrashians, like dragging his name through their butt. What, what? In the butt? You want to put it in my butt? In my butt? You want to? Sorry, that's, you wouldn't, if you don't, you probably don't know what I'm singing, but that's okay. Um, Anyway, it says here, Ray J opens up about 2007 sex tape scandal, saying its release was a partnership with Kim Kardashian and Kris Jenner since the beginning. He said, I've sat in the shadows for over 14 years, allowing the Kardashians to use my name, to abuse my name, make billions of dollars over a decade and a half, talking about a topic I've never really spoken about. When I put the, when I put on the comments, that's all 
that when I put on the comments that all of this is a lie, I didn't mean Kanye coming to meet me about some second sex tape. I mean, all of this is a lie. From the beginning of us putting this sex tape out, this has been the biggest lie in the history of the, in the industry, in the history of entertainment. They're not letting the world know that there's a bunch of sex tapes that we made, but they're not going anywhere because she has them all. Um, I felt suicidal because when you know something's real and it's true and you're watching a whole family create an empire from a lie they've created, it's heartbreaking and disrespectful to all the entertainers who have been honest and true to their craft. Well, 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 well. (laughs) Well, no, I'm just reading a comment and somebody said, I want to take this seriously, but that hat. Um, Yeah, it's, I don't know who to believe. Right. I, but I've always thought that the whole sex tape thing, it just, it it was Kris Jenner all along, you know, it was Agatha all along. It was Kris Jenner all along. Like you can see her fingerprints all over it. Like it was this thing that catapulted Kim really to fame and to notoriety. Um, because, you know, she was desired and that proximity to black men was the thing that really got her going. But now she's entering into her white woman era. She's trying to move differently, even in terms of aesthetically with her body. Um, got herself, um, what's that one's name now? The one that she's with. I want to say Pete Davis, but I could have made that up. Pete Davidson, is it? Yeah, him. Well, the white guy that she's with now, um, even the way that he dressed to go to the Met Gala. He looked like he was um, going to a, a school recital, but you know, I don't want to bash him. I just think it's interesting is all. And her focus, her determination to fit into Marilyn Monroe's dress. Why are you always trying to enter other people's skin? Why do, why can you, Kimberly, why can't you find any originality? Why must you always be impersonating somebody else? So for years, you got your money up basically trying to emulate things from black women. And then that got boring for you. That wasn't the flavor of the month anymore. So you're like, oh no, actually what I wanted to do is be remembered almost like Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe was so much more than what you're doing right now. But I also think that it's interesting that this um, rebrand or this slow rebrand that she's going for coincides with her you know, career change, if you want to call it that, into law and and wanting to present herself in a particular way, I feel. Um, She then said, oh, she had to lose three stone to fit in um, in however many weeks or whatever. Was it a stone or three stones? I don't know. She needed to lose all this weight in a number, in a short number of weeks so she could fit into the Marilyn Monroe dress. You didn't need to. You literally did not need to because nobody begged you to wear the dress. Like you did not need to wear the dress. There are so many other things with your money that you could have worn. You could have had somebody with your money create a replica, which they actually did because the dress couldn't get past her um, implants, her her bum bum. So she had to kind of cover the back of it with kind of like a a fur, white fur thing that she wrapped around herself. But the zip wouldn't go up um, over her back. So then she changed into a replica version straight after. You should have just worn the replica version the whole time. Why are you forcing it? Why are you such a beg? It's so weird. Like people look at you or look to you as some kind of bastion of um, desirability when you just move mad. I just, I, me personally, I've always said, I don't get what the allure is. I, I don't get it. Like good on you lot for making the money and doing the things that you've done and making the impact that you've done and utilizing social media in the way that you have. But when social media goes, what are you man doing? Okay, you're moving into law and whatever else, and you've got money for this lifetime, for this generation and next generation when it comes to your family, whatever, whatever. But it's just so vacuous. It's all so dangerously vacuous. And it's such a terrible message to be sending to young girls that, and when people now say that you lot are the problem with um, why girls are augmenting themselves and doing this and doing that, you'll be like, no, because we're also affected by the beauty industry too. So, yeah. So you'll say that, but then look at the wildness that you're doing, like these crash diets because you want to fit into a dress. People are dying, Kim. People are dying. My God. Um, 
And then they said something about, oh, and then there's a, was it a lock of Marilyn's hair that they wanted to give to Kim? I said, this sounds like witchcraft. This sounds like witchcraft. Like, why won't people let this woman rest in peace? Why? Taking pieces of her body and just scattering it everywhere so people can feel like, why can't she, why can't you let her rest in peace? Why must you have her in pieces? Gosh, people are nasty. I just find it so weird and so creepy. I I can't imagine somebody coming up to me and being like, oh, here's a piece of Naomi Campbell's wig. I know how much you like her. Here you go. I'll be like, nah, thanks. I'm good. Thank you very much. Like, it's just weird. That's all I've got to say about that. I just find it so weird. But that Ray J revelation, I basically feel like it doesn't like surprise me per se, because boy, they're a very crafty, crafty uh, group of individuals. So yeah, basically I'm not shocked. Um, And then what else did I see? Oh, I say I saw. Um, oh, well, okay. So it's when I should have been recording this, which would have been a Sunday, right? It was Mother's Day in America. Um, And is it just America? Was it Canada as well? I don't know. But anyway, it was Mother's Day. um, And, you know, usually when it's Mother's Day, you want to put up a post where you're just like, oh, mother of my child, you make it look so easy. Oh, my God. You want to put up something like that. But no, not Stevie J. Stevie J said, you know, this is what I'm going to say about Faith Evans. Hence the song I sang at the beginning of the show. (laughs) Stevie J posted. Faith Renee Jordan, I've hurt you, disrespected you, and humiliated you in front of the world. From this day forward, I promise to listen to your feelings and be more delicate with your heart. I also promise to build you up even more and to communicate daily with you, respect you, and love on you until you're as happy as you were when we got married. I've learned my lesson and I never capital letters, want to live without you because God knows I'm a better man with you. And I'm asking you to find it in your heart to forgive me and allow me to rebuild our trust. Happy Mother's Day. X, I love you. That was a kiss. One kiss. On Valentine's, I was going to say on Valentine's Day, but it might as well be on Mother's Day. This is what you pulled from your heart. With umbilical cords wet on the street That is so inappropriate My god This is what you pulled from your heart This I'm sorry Like Kevin Samuels didn't die for this God God It's highly Highly inappropriate And I'll be getting on to him shortly Um Mother's Day Is when you pretty much want to tell the world That you cheated on her And Oh god One thing men will do in this life is what? Hmm? What is it? Yes, that's correct. Embarrass you. Embarrass you. What the hell? Of all the times? And that's how you greet her happy Mother's Day. Basically, oh, babe, I'm really sorry I cheated on you. Um, I'm not going, I'm going to really, really try my hardest not to anymore. Um, And that is your gift for Mother's Day. My fidelity. Wow. Wow. The bar is with Kevin. Sorry. Um, I feel like I want to call this episode. We need to talk about Kevin because it, I just think it's so apt. I just think it works, but we'll see how I get on. Um, but yeah, you know, we've talked around it enough. Um, and so let's get, you know, to, to the meat that's on the bones. Kevin Samuels. <sighs> He's gone. Now that he's gone, you want to tweet crap and that is, sorry, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. Um, for those who don't know who Kevin Samuels is, Kevin Samuels is, um, was, uh, a prolific, uh, misogynoirist. Uh, you know, he, he made YouTube videos. He was kind of like, they called him a self-styled self proclaimed um relationship expert um and he would record his videos wearing a suit and women would you know call into his show as it were 
um, asking what they could do to get themselves a high value man. Don't know what the hell that is. Um, and he would basically, you know, be cheeky to them, be shady to them. Um, basically telling them that if they've got children or if they're, you know, fat or whatever, that they should forget it. Like they're not going to get anybody, blah, 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 blah. And for some reason, these women clearly are masochists um, because they'd call in to get insulted in this way. Um, (laughs) It was actually horrendous. Whenever I would see a clip of whatever was happening, I would just be like, why are people doing this to themselves? Why? But then I understand that patriarchy is a motherfucker, you know, like, and it has so many people in a chokehold. And, and I think that anybody will sell if they tell women that there is a secret to, um, figuring men out. I'll tell you what the secret is. Patriarchy. That's it. There's no cheat code. There's no nothing. There's nothing that you can do. These femininity coaches, all of these people that are telling you like, oh, oh, this is all you need to do to be able to attract a man. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's all a lie. It's all ridiculous. Embezzle. That's what it is. Embezzlement. Because under patriarchy, you're always going to have the shorter straw. So jumping up and down, for man Like Lady saw Before she decided To give her life to Christ She said Man had at least A me problem So me left Idiot for have them That's what she said And that is That is a, That to me That is the gospel She went ahead And, and gave And became minister Marion Hall But she was already Delivering the gospel When she said Me too rich For argue with bitch me too nice for in a cat fight. She said she told us. That spoke to my spirit. I've got goosebumps right now. Because that was a word. Man is the least of my problems. Because why? There's so much more happening in the world. But when we live in a society that tells you that the greatest thing that you can do is get yourself a man. And people might be like, shut up, Kelechi. You've got a man. Is he not a white? Whatever else you want to say. But the fact of the matter is like, they'll be like, oh, you can't chat because, you know, you've got a partner. And so you don't know what it's like in these streets. It's a jungle, girl. Um, and Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. But at the same time, I'm, my personhood isn't tied into that identity. And I think it's important that it's not because should anything happen, Anytime, because nobody knows tomorrow. You you want to keep doing what you're doing and 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 build on the love that you have. But anything can happen at any time. But I would be damned if like it's like ah oh, I don't now have an identity because I don't have a man. That's wild to me. From you know from where I've grown to, that's just wild to me. Um, but anyway. People would call into his show and he would be saying this and that. And it was just at points transphobic, homophobic, fat phobic, just a hatred of black women. He was just horrible to them. And, you know, now he's dead. Go. There's a thousand words that I could say, but it won't make you come home. Yeah, what happens to your YouTube ratings now that you're gone? Mm. Monetize that motherfucker now, but you won't get to spend. That is so horrible. I'm terrible. I know those Nick cells will see this and be like, see, see what I said. She hates black men. See what I said. Shut up. Shut up and go and talk about something relevant Prostate cancer Is Disproportionately affecting black men And yet Here you are on the internet Thinking that black women Being feminist is what's Breaking up the black community Like Not not the, not the violence that's inflicted Upon black women, that's not what's breaking up the community No, 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 no It's because black women want to be treated 
like freaking human beings that that's what's breaking up the community like how dare they because a black boy wants to wear nail polish nail varnish that's breaking up the black community not you you you're not the one breaking up the community with your misogynoir no it's them ridiculous anyway um i talk about that because when the news broke that kevin samuels had died There were a lot of black women who weren't sad about it. Let's put it that way. They weren't sad about it because of how much trauma and how how wild he behaved online for so many years. And the thing is, he knew it was always going to sell because there was a video of him saying that, you know, if I made um, more videos bashing women, I'd black bashing black women, I'd get more likes. But from these guys that want a reason to dislike black women I know that I'd get more likes So he was always aware And then he started making those videos But the thing is Black women as a collective We're powerful We're so spiritually powerful That And I said it I think earlier on At the beginning of this year I said 2022 is the last year That some of you lot A lot of you lot Will be able to try black women In the way that you do Because our energies are aligning And if you choose to move mad You're the one that will suffer I promise you that Because we are over it We are over it And we're calling out the things And if it means that you're going to get a flogging You're going to get a flogging Whether in this realm or the next It really is what it is You know, and a lot of people don't like that So, you know, women, black women Were kind of like, anyway, what's for dinner? And and that annoys me because, you know Women are just like, black women are just like "Mm -hmm, Anyway, and, and And instantly that turned into, oh, I can't believe you lot are celebrating his death. I can't believe you lot are celebrating somebody. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. If you do not want people to quote unquote celebrate, even though that's not what I saw people doing, but of course you're going to add hyperbole to the whole thing because you're upset that people aren't fawning over him and aren't sad about it. They're just not sad about it. Nobody was, well, I'm sure some people were celebrating, but the majority of people that I saw were not, just not sad about it. They weren't out here celebrating, celebrating. And if they wanted to celebrate, who the fuck are you to tell them not to? If they are the ones that experienced the harm, who are you to tell them what they should be doing? If you're so concerned about how people behave when somebody passes, why don't you tell that person or tell those people that you care about while they're alive to just do better? Why won't you do that? And why is it that when black women react to something in a very like fair, rightful way, you've got some stupid, ashy motherfucker turning around going, oh, can't believe you're behaving like this. And usually there are women there as well. Other black women there as well. Like, oh, oh, I can't believe that people are doing this. All Kevin Samuels ever did was, all he ever did was misogynoir. That's all he ever did, actually So all of, oh, he was just trying to bring us together By telling us the harsh truths But he never told you lot the harsh truths of the men It was always the quote-unquote harsh truths For the black women That's who he had the harsh truths for But guess what? God had a harsh truth for him too Bloop Bloop And I don't necessarily Well, I'm gonna lie I was gonna say I don't necessarily see death as a punishment But mm, I mean, we all die That's nature in it So Viewing death as punishment is actually a quite it's something that we learned from Abrahamic religion, if we're being honest, because it's something that we get um in, you know, uh for for sinning. But I'm not that evolved. You know, this is why I say I'm a dickhead in recovery. I'm not that evolved. While I know that rationally and I know that logically, sometimes you get what you get. Um, but I know, I know in my rational brain that. Death is not a punishment, you know? But sometimes when people piss you off, you know, you feel the way that you feel. But look, what happened to him happened to him. And it's sad. It's always sad when people die. But it's more sad because he didn't use his life in a way that was affirming. And so upon his death, people had things to say. and. You can't hold that against them right? And so all of this over-policing Of how people feel about things And how they express it when somebody dies It just really annoys me Because when I made that All My Sons episode When I had to drag those stupid ashy dragons Right um, 
some fool went and left the one star review saying, ah, oh, well, you've got misdirected anger. You're mentioning God and you're cursing people and rah, 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 rah. And I know that a couple of people had the same sentiments online on the day that the episode came out. And all I can say to you lot is like, I know we're a few segments ahead or a couple of segments early, but you could suck your mothers. Yeah. Suck your mum. Find her and suck her out dry. Suck her out until you pass out and she passes out. Pass out indefinitely, preferably underwater. Pass out. Because why do you have more vim for my reaction at the weights that the violence that's been inflicted upon me, the constant harassment that I am receiving, people talking about wanting to exterminate me. You've got vim for me, but not the people who are doing the thing. Do you not see how that is perpetuating misogynoir in and of itself? You don't know me from Adam. You don't know me from anywhere, but for some reason you feel like I am deserving of whatever fuckery that they are doing. And not only am I deserving of it, but I should not dare to have anything to say to it as a counter argument. And the thing is, I will have always, I will always have something to say. My mouth is like a motor. My mouth will be running and nobody, nobody will tell me otherwise. Because if I do not defend myself, if I do not protect myself, who will now defend and protect me? Clearly not you, stupid, ugly, clearly not you. So I meant to just sit there and have it because that's what you're used to. Because I refuse to believe that some of you have mothers who are self-motivated, self-starters, who have self-esteem, who have all of the self-self-selves, basically. I believe I refuse to believe that you have mothers that have self-self-self. Because if you did, then how are you like this? Because you would have seen her, you would have seen that positivity. You would have seen her moving with certain, you know, with a certain gravitas. Because if you saw your mother moving with a certain gravitas, why would you try to beat it out and kill it in other women? Why? Why? So that must mean that you haven't seen it. And so all you want to do whenever you do see it is to snuff it out in other people, but you can't snuff it out in me. I'll tell you that for, 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 for a fact. I will tell you that for a fact, because on my tembe, it will be you that will suffer. Should you try? Should you? Yeah. Should, 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 should you try? It will be you that will suffer. But anyway, I'm not even getting into the meat and the bones of the issue. Move off my screen, man. Um, it says here. Kevin Samuels, a YouTuber who became known for his controversial relationship advice, has died. His mother confirmed to NBC News. Rumours of his death first circulated on social media Thursday night. His mother, Beverly Samuels Birch, declined to release details about what happened. She said she learned of her son's death from social media. That was a terrible thing for social media to put that out. I didn't even know. I hadn't even been notified, she said in a phone call on Friday. All I'm doing is requesting that people pray for us. The Atlanta Police Department said officers were called to an apartment in East, on East Paces Ferry Road, Northeast, on Thursday morning regarding a person injured. By the time police arrived, first responders were performing CPR on an unresponsive man later identified as Samuels. A woman in the apartment told officers Samuels had complained about chest pain and that she attempted to help him, but he fell. The police report states the woman called 911. Samuels was taken to Piedmont Hospital, police said. The Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office said in a press release that it performed an autopsy and the cause and manner of death are pending. The office listed Samuels' age as 53. Samuels, who described himself as an image consulted, um, consultant, shared, well, the image of um, the devil, the image of Lucifer. Anyway, shared YouTube videos to his um, more than 1.4 million subscribers discussing topics that included dating and relationships. His views, which many people on social media felt were an attack on black women, often sparked outrage. Last month, he was slammed over a video where he labeled women who are over 35 and unmarried (laughs) as leftovers. Is this your king? I'm sorry, I have to pause there. Is this your king? Somebody's calling unmarried women who are over the age of 35 leftovers. Can you not see how that is a problem? Can you not see how violent that behavior is? But, you know, of all of those things that he's done, the one that got me was the one where he said that you shouldn't believe a child when they tell you that they've been abused because children lie. That is when I knew that, nah, this guy is a piece of shit. 
it, you can argue about all of the other things. You can try to defend all of the other things, but that to me is the worst, worst, worst thing that any adult can say. I think that that is disgusting, proper disgusting. And I don't know if he's projecting, but I can't, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, um, uh, what is it? Therapize him. I'm not a therapist and I can't therapize a corpse anyway. Um, anyway, if you have made it to 35 and you are unmarried, you are a leftover woman. He said in a video, you are what is left. Men know that there is something likely wrong with you. And again, this is inaccurate. Because there are wonderful women who are 35, 40, 55, 60, 70, 80, all of that. Wonderful women who might not be married for one reason or another. There's no, it's unlikely that something's wrong with them. It's likely that there's something wrong with the society that we live in, especially a society that tells men who are of similar age, who are 34, to now start fucking um, 22 year olds in the back of their Mercedes. That, that Go and take that up with the men Again you're focused on the wrong fucking thing But now you're focused in the dirt Oh well Um, He also stirred up controversy Over videos where he rated women's appearances Based on their looks and dress size Many said his advice was toxic and misogynistic Following news of his death Many social media users were quick to point out His contentious views Kevin Samuels has made a career off of shamelessly disgracing black women for profit. He emboldened the most toxic individuals to project tired and harmful narratives about black women. Um, Dead or alive, what a disgraceful life to live. That's all I've got for that misogynist. What did Kevin Samuels die from? Being 56 and unmarried. (laughs) Some, including YouTuber Adam22, defended Samuels. Kevin Samuels was a good dude who gave a lot of people solid advice. He got smeared for having a backbone and an opinion and he didn't back down to the mob. Rest in peace. Rest in pieces. Rest in piss. Um, Back down from what mob? What mob? The, the, The mob? That's just like, can you stop? Can you keep our names out of your mouth? Like, if you keep attacking a group of people and they say, actually, we don't like this. Can you stop referring to us? How are they the mob? Solid advice If he was giving you lots of solid advice He'd tell you to go and get your prostate checked He'd tell you to, you know, go and do regular checkups generally He'll tell you to wash your ass crack He'd tell you to wash your boxes He'd tell you to learn how to cook He'd tell you to cream in between your fingers He'd tell you so many things So many things He'd tell you to pick up a fucking book Go and read some bell hooks Spice up your life He would tell you so many different things But he'll tell you to go and pay your child support But here you are that's not the solid advice he was giving you Having you out here believing that he, you are a high value man When he wasn't even a high value man himself Oh yeah, but somebody even tried to flip it with their mental gymnastics And they said, yeah, so what if he died alone Or, you know, he with no family to notify Or next of kin to notify straight away And, you know, he was with a white woman And that's, that's interesting to me as well For all of the things that you'll be saying about black women This and this is what they need to do And that's, that's what fueled that fuckery that you were doing But, you know, he, um, you know he, he didn't have much to his name Apparently, I read somewhere But that could also be false um, About how much money he actually had They said that he was in a lot of debt wouldn't doubt it Said he had um, He was subletting Some kind of one bed place And so where he was filming from Was probably one corner of his room um, It's very sad You know But somebody said Yeah you know Well he didn't have All of the things that he spoke about But he was still encouraging All of us to get it That's a true person That's a true giver And that's when I knew That like nah A lot of these guys online Are tapped Like Tapped And I'm saying online Like these men aren't existing in real life But to see somebody try to flip it in that way No, no He was telling you a lie And you believed in a lie And men love to talk about Oh, these girls and their influencers These girls and your influencers But of all the influencers that like Women have you, you lot's influencers are the most dangerous Men don't like to believe that they've got influencers But you have you have got influencers Like you definitely have Joe Rogan, this person Kevin Samuels here You've all, you've got all and all and Joe Budden All your influencers are Future Future's your main influencer You'll be quoting him up and down Up and down, up and down That's your main influencer Why is it that you only want to be influenced by negativity? 
Why is it that you only want to be in, influenced by fuckery? Ask yourself that. If, if you've got anything to say about the girls, are they being influenced to go and get BBLs? Okay, they're being influenced to go and get BBLs. But their own BBL is not start standing for bastardry and bamboozlement and, and, and logic lacking. BBLL. That's not what their own is standing for. So face your front. Um, but yeah, the story was really, really a lot. It was really a lot. Um, and you know, people were waiting for it to be confirmed. And I do feel for his mom. I do feel for his mom that she had to find out through social media. That sucks. But again, while no, of course it sucks. I went, you know, that sucks because I said the same thing when, um, you know, when people were sharing news of other people passing and not allowing the family to have time to do what they needed to do with the information or whatever. But at the same time, if he had put down a next of kin, you wouldn't have had to find out through social media. It's because he was so wayward and so removed from everything, so isolated, so deep in his hatred that he didn't have a next of kin down. He didn't have his life in order. So that's how you ended up finding out through social media because how it would have taken you a while otherwise, I imagine. Um, so that sucks. But again, it comes down to his choices. Um, so what does it say here? It says, um, what is it? So you're telling me Kevin Samuels had high cholesterol and a whole heart attack and wanted to talk about fat women. Well, they're living longer than him. He died in an apartment. He was subletting. He was on the internet calling women worthless while he was, <laughs> while he was someone's residual income. 56, three times divorced, renting an apartment and dying alone with no emergency contact. That's who's y'all's uh, relation. That's who y'all took your relationship advice from. Um, and that was a response to someone saying, I just saw that it took so long to announce it because they couldn't find a next of kin. All that talk about relationships and he died alone with no emergency contact. Very sad. Um, then uh, Tony said, Kevin Samuels had Hodgkin's lymphoma in college. If news about his passing is true, a Stanford study suggested people who've had chest radiation for Hodgkin's disease have about a threefold increase in the risk of a fatal heart attack over the next following decades. Um, Hodgkin lympho lymphoma outcomes have improved due to advances in cancer treatment. However, HL survivors remain at an increased risk of, for cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. Um, and people were like, oh, see, this is more of a reason not to be cussing him now that he's dead. No, 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 no. Because we didn't know that he had Hodgkin's lymphoma. But guess who did know? He did. You are aware of your own situation with you are aware of your own situation. You are aware of the risks of your situation and you'll be drinking Red Bull as if you're um, as if you're um, Verstappen's car. You'll be drinking, drinking, drinking Red Bull. Well, it didn't give you wings, did it? It tapped you out. Tapped you out. Like. I don't want to say anything inflammatory and just nasty for the sake of it. I don't believe in that. But at the same time, I'm just like, he incited so much more harmful rhetoric towards black women that I would be lying if I was like, oh, this is so sad in that respect or in that regard. It is sad. It is sad. It is sad that somebody didn't get the chance to kind of realize or, or to kind of turn back from their very, very fucked up ways of talking about groups of people, not just black women, but just how he spoke to people. Like, it's a shame that he didn't get a chance to kind of like turn that all around. And I pray that we all get that chance to look at areas in our life where we could be doing better and do it. But nobody knows how long they have because he was there with his snow bunny and then now he's no more, you know? And it's interesting. Well, I was going to say so many things there, but <laughs> that was your leader That was your leader The one that will be giving you Vim to come and tweet at me Anyhow about what I'm doing But that was your leader That's what, where he was found In his final moments Um Yeah it's just It's sad But you know One of the saddest things though Was Ovi From Love Island 
who decided that he was going to tweet and he said, celebrating anyone dying is weird, creepy, and I pray God works on your heart. Even if I disagree with someone, for it to affect me to the point of feeling good in death is just wild. What you need to notice or note about Ovi Soko um, from Love Island is that he hardly ever speaks on anything. I didn't even know what that that he was very good with sentences. I wasn't too aware. I didn't watch Love Island like that, but I was very aware of how much people were lusting after him because he's a very, very good looking guy. But he hardly spoke on anything. Uh, There have been so many prominent issues that have taken place over the years or since he's been in Love Island that he has said nothing about. His silence has been deafening. But this is the one, Kevin Samuels, is the hill that you want to die on? The hill that he's already died on? That's the hill that you now want to go and die on? Celebrating somebody dying is weird. Da, 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 da. You're not a black woman. So you don't know what it feels like to have that person saying things that will mean that other people can hum- humiliate you and degrade you, denigrate you, all of that, disrespect you. You don't know what it's like because what you're building is a culture that Slowly, slowly, the more that things like that are said, the more that people are just laughing about it, giving him views, giving him, platforming him more, platforming him more. Who is going to be at risk? Black women. But for some reason, all of you think it's a fucking joke. Like black men who I've come across who are just like, oh uh, yeah, no, no, I don't take what you said seriously, but I just find him entertaining. You're still adding to his views. You're still adding to his platform. So you yourself, you're a stupid goat. You're a stupid fool. And this is the one that you want to speak up about. Oh, to the point, if it affected me to the point that I'm celebrating his death. Yeah, that's how bad he was. That's how terrible he was towards black women. But you wouldn't know because you're not a black woman. And it tells you everything you need to know about these guys, because the reason that you were popping, the reason that you were allowed to pop so hard on Love Island is because of how of how black women backed you. I'm just fixing my chain. Because of how black women backed you. But as always, black women will back these guys on these shows And then they'll just turn around and spit in your face, basically. Like that's told me everything I need to know about him in terms of who he's interested, who he wants to date, all of that stuff. Like you can now see clearly how he rolls because he clearly doesn't empathize with anything regarding black women. It's a weird, it's a weird space to be in. But then again, there are black men who are like him who actually date black women And they felt the same way And there's a whole conversation to be had About the black men who date black women That they can't stand So, you know, it's all all weird to me But, um, yeah, I don't think I've got much else to say about that Other than, you know, keep black women out of your mouth If you've got nothing um, nice to say Just, like, leave us alone and go and do you And I hope that with him with his, with him goes the whole terminology about high value, this high value, high value man, whatever, whatever. But obviously there'll always be somebody who's trying to now come and take his place. They want to get into there and start, you know, spouting their own and spewing their own nonsense. And there'll always be a market for it because people are always willing to um, entertain negativity as it pertains to black women. But, you know, it is what it is. Is what it is, but um, I don't feel anything, and I wouldn't pretend to. Oh well, oh well. How you live, that's where you'll meet yourself. And as for the men who were just like, oh well, you know, rah rah, rah shut up. You've always got to take things to the extremes. It reminds me of the guys who are like, oh, women don't want us to come up to them, come up to them when they're working out at the gym. Well, if they're gonna die, if I see them about to hurt themselves, I'm not gonna say anything. But why have you got to take it to the extremes? Why have you got to take it to that point where you're now wishing death upon them? So it's okay for you to wish death upon somebody who just doesn't want you to talk to them at the gym, but people can't be, feel nothing when it's announced that Kevin Samuels has died. Very weird, isn't it? Very weird. Like you feel like women owe you their time. And because there was a video that was circulating where this girl... I think her name was, I've forgotten her name. She was working out at the gym pretty and she was doing um, hip thrusts and a guy tried to come and put a mat underneath her. And she was like, no, I didn't ask you for that. You can take it away. 
Um, and he was like, oh, it will just make you feel more comfortable. But again, I'm a big girl. If I want something, I know where to go and get it. Like she's clearly been training. I think she was thrusting 80 kg at that point as well. Like she clearly knows what she's doing. Nobody asked you for a mat. And this is that whole thing of like false benevolence and, and um, this whole weird chivalry thing. It's, it's it encroaches on your personal space. It encroaches on your autonomy. I didn't ask you for that. So don't be, and don't do it while somebody is in the middle of working out. If you're so desperate to try and have a conversation because some guys were like, oh, but he just wanted to maybe talk to her. So you couldn't wait until she'd finished her set, but you have to come, you have to come and interrupt. Oh, well, in that case, if you don't want us to talk to you, if I see a girl struggling at the gym, I'm not going to say anything, but you know, there are lots of men who struggle at the gym as well. Why don't you go and help them? Because you lot never run to go and help the men at the gym who are struggling. You want to come and give all of your unsolicited advice to women and you only give it to the women that you find attractive. You don't bother with the women that you don't find attractive. They could be having a barbell on their face. The barbell could have landed on their face. You will not say anything, but it's a cutie. Oh yeah. Then you're going to be all the way in there, even though there's nothing wrong with her form, even though there's nothing wrong with what she's doing, but you just want to talk. And it's interesting that the way that you feel like you can bond or, um, or get in with a woman is to try to downplay what she's doing and tell her that there's something that's got, you know, that there's room for improvement. Meanwhile, your legs are barely holding you up. Your calf muscles look like this. Your calf muscles are no bigger than a 50 PP, uh, 50 pence piece. But you want to be the one that's giving people advice. Omar, if you don't go and find a squat rack and and get to squatting, fucking idiots. Um, was that all I wanted to say? Oh, yeah, I guess so. There was the last so you mad um about some men being stopped from playing dominoes um because they were told that the 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 noise is too much or something. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it says here, um. A Thursday afternoon at Maidavale Market, sorry, Maida Hill Market Square is filled with pensioners happily chatting and playing cards while enjoying the sunshine. However, over the past year, the square has been the centre of an ongoing row between some of its regulars and Westminster Council. Last year, Ernest Theophile, Theophile um, a 73-year-old black man, who regularly plays dominoes with other locals in the area, was summoned to court by the council and accused of being too noisy and causing a disturbance. This resulted in the council initially being granted a special injunction that banned social gatherings, although the injunction was overturned shortly afterwards. Theophile and his friends um, could still face jail if they breach a court order by playing loud amplified music, drinking alcohol and shouting and swearing. The square is very important to me. I come here virtually seven days a week, um, said Theophile. I've grown up here all my life. And so I don't know any other. To me, it's like home away from a home. For Theophile, the square is a haven for older people, mainly from a West Indian and minority ethnic background to find company and spend time with like-minded folk. According to Theophile, um, they do not engage in antisocial behavior such as drinking, shouting or swearing. Rather, the main purpose of their gatherings is to play dominoes with one another, a culturally significant pastime in the West Indian community. The loneliness was one of the biggest factors as to why we gathered there. That's why the square was ideal for us, Theophar said. Sometimes the younger generation come here and congregate, but we just want a place where we can socialize and play a few games to pass the time. Theophar's barrister has argued that the court order was which threatened jail sentences is likely to be indirectly discriminatory. An injunction restraining the activities of a minority of black people in a public square where there is a theoretical power of arrest and sanction of imprisonment is, di- is indirectly discriminatory. Um, Theophar believes that being taken to court was absolutely racially motivated, he said. It's because it's mainly groups of ethnic minorities who come here, and that's the reason why I think they wanted us out. However, the issues in the square are about more than games of dominoes between pensioners, says Westminster Council, which claims that antisocial behaviour also takes place in the square, such as public urination, drug dealing and drinking. And this was the rationale behind the court order. Westminster Council also claims that a free space was offered to dominoes um, for dominoes to continue, although this is something Theophar and other locals say they are unaware of. Um... 
Tony Edwards, who is in his 60s and has been living in the area for more than half a century, agrees the square is simply a place where many people from the West Indian community, a West Indian community come to mingle and socialize. I go to work and when I finish work, I come here to socialize, he said. I'm here all the time, seven days a week, he added. All we do here is play a little cards, a little dominoes. That's all we do. We don't trouble anybody. We're peaceful. We're a family. Others say the fact that many pensioners use the square as a social club is a result of a lack of community spaces in the area. We have nowhere else to go and gather, said Ashworth, a retired security officer who regularly visits uh, visits the square. We only really have this place here and we can sit outside and play a little dominoes or a little backgammon too. We've been to the council so many times to ask them to give us a place, but we still only have this square. The square is used by um, used by many different people because there's nothing here for anybody. Um, and that's true. Like there's quite a bit more in that article. It's in it's on the Guardian. Um, I'm glad that Labour won the Westminster seats. Good for you. I think they won the Westminster seats, didn't they, during the um, elections that we had last week? Good for you, because that is clearly racially motivated. Or they there's pissing, there's drug taking, there's this, there's that. Isn't that the case with any park? So why are you focused on these men specifically? Old men. What are they going to do? Old men. They just wanted to sit there playing dominoes. It reminds me of um, um, Lo- the Lonely Londoners, um, that book. Like, it's so lonely for those people of an older generation. I thought, fuck, I think like it's lonely for most people who are not of, you know, England to be here and so if there's any way that you can create community of course you'd want to do that where do you want people to go like where do you want them to have a sense of community like life is hard enough as it is like it's so so hard um being here in England and trying to figure yourself out and then they're like oh no you can't be here you can't mingle here you can't do this you can't do that but if you've gotten rid of all of the community community clubs where are people meant to go where are they meant to, where are they meant to socialize? Where are they meant to feel like they belong? Or is that the point? People aren't meant to feel like they belong. They should give up and they should get out. No, no. So reading that, yeah, just made me feel away when I saw that earlier in this week. So I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to share it. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'll big up the second of this week's show sponsors then um, before I wrap this up because it is so late. I can't believe that this is what is happening. I'm glad that, you know, when it comes to the Grand Prix, we're going to be in Barcelona from, um, we're going to be in Barcelona from next week. So I don't need to, you know, be going through all of this Higgy Hagar recording late. I'm sure there'll be some reason why I still end up recording late though. So um, it is what it is. It's, it's tough. It's tough being up. I don't know how they do it on the read because me, ooh, I am tired. I am tired. What is this? Just bringing up um, what I've got. I have to be so intentional about like um, thinking about my visuals now because I'm. I honestly I haven't recorded in so long. I'm just like la 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 la, just doing something else. I'm like no, actually I need to get back to recording. But anyway. Say Her Name by Drida Say Mitchell and Ryan Carter is available from 1st of April. So like I said, it's already available in ebook and audiobook and paperback editions. Um, it's a chilling thriller from the best-selling authors of Spare Room. One woman goes in search of her past and what she finds is the darkest side of humanity. You can um, order your copy at amazon.co.uk forward slash SYM and the Kindle un- uh, for Kindle Unlimited subscribers they can also read the book at no extra cost. So visit amazon.co.uk forward slash um, SYM to order the book in ebook, audiobook or paperback edition. Um, the backstory is that it's 20 years since Ava, a biracial woman, was adopted as an eight-year-old and Cherry and Carlton Sugar McNeil have always been the only parents she wanted or needed. But when she's dealt the blow of Cherry's death and her own uh, suspension from work, Eva decides to, um, it's time to discover who she was before she was theirs. So against Sugar's advice, Ava 
joins a DNA database desperate for a match that will unlock her identity. And when a positive hit comes, she's excited to learn that there are relations out there who might hold the key. But the closer Eva gets to uh, uncovering her past, the more it appears that somebody is trying to stop her finally from um, finding out the truth. Um, Drida has been a guest on many radio shows and presented BBC Radio 4's flagship books program, Open Book. She has written in a number of leading newspapers, including The Guardian, and was thrilled to be named one of Britain's 50 remarkable women by Lady Geek in association with Nokia. She's a trustee of the Royal Literary Fund and an ambassador for the Reading Agency. Some of their books, um, that's Drida and Ryan, are currently in development as TV and film adaptations. Drida's parents are from the beautiful Caribbean island of Grenada. Her name Drida is Irish and pronounced with a long vowel E sound in the middle, which is why I've been doing anyway. So that's wonderful to know. Look at me knowing all of the things. Um, so yeah, go and check out the book um, on amazon.co.uk forward slash SYM. That should take you to Say Her Name um, by Drida Say Mitchell, um, Mitchell and Ryan Carter. Go and check it out. Anyway, now for Start Your Motors. I don't really have too, too much to say about Start Your Motors in terms of like the Miami Grand Prix. Um, clearly it happened without me being there, but I guess I needed to be here for some reason. You know, everything always becomes clearer down the line, but I clearly needed to be here to record this episode. Sure, clearly, Spirit did not want me out in Miami wearing pom pom shorts and being cute. Don't know why, but fine, I'll go with it. Whatever. So you know, I'm here recording. Um, I don't feel like Miami was a very exciting race, and I'm not even saying that to be a hater because. I could say that to be a hater, but I don't feel like I'm saying that to be a hater. I just don't think that it's slapped. For all that Miami is, I don't know, there's some, there's a certain Jenny San Juan that, you know, that I don't feel like America has when it comes to the Grand Prix. I just think like they pack it, pack it, pack it, pack it with celebrities and there's no source. But I wasn't there. So maybe the energy is different when you're there in person. I saw that Michelle Obama came through on the Saturday. Uh, Michael Jordan was there on a Sunday. David Beckham was there on a Sunday. It was all very, very busy. However, it's clear that the FIA are still moving mad because now they've added a new regulation um, um, and a new, well, a new rule that says that drivers are not allowed to wear any jewelry when they're racing. And it's just an interesting thing for them to introduce because who wears jewellery? Who's got the source? Who's got the juice? Who's got the source? Hamilton. So clearly this is direct. Where is, what, what is Michael Massey's new department? Because it definitely feels like he moved into a new department and he's like, how can I make this guy's life miserable? And it's now you're targeting jewellery. My geez, you've got bigger things to worry about. You've got bigger tyres to fry than what you're doing right now. I think they said something about, oh, their underwear needs to be fireproof. Fair enough. And they shouldn't wear any jewelry. And of course you can put all of these things down to health and safety, but it just feels like, again, you've got bigger issues to be discussing than what jewelry that they're wearing, especially since the majority of the drivers aren't wearing jewelry. And from what I think that Hamilton says, he said he can't even take his nose ring out anyway. I don't know how they fixed it in. That's worrying that it can't come out. But anyway, he said that, you know, can't take it out anywhere. And you know that he just wears earrings, couple of earrings and a nose ring. So what is the issue? And for the fact that if somebody's going to risk their life driving one of them motherfucking cars, let them wear the earring if they want to wear, if they want to wear yarring, let them wear yarring. If they want to wear yarring in their nose, let them wear yarring in their nose. What is your problem? What is your business? What is it going to do with you? Why are you being so nasty, so rude? I honestly think it's just another way that they're trying to break him mentally. I could be, you know, in my mind, creating this whole narrative of the FIA and villainizing them. Maybe, maybe, or they could actually just be villains. And, you know, no, we're not imagining it because jewelry, really? So then in response to that, in retaliation to that, Hamilton wore three watches, eight rings, and like as many necklaces as he could find. Um to go to the press, um, to the press conference that was happening 
um, prior to the race. And that was on the Saturday. I know it's Saturday or it's Friday. Um, he wore all of the jewelries that he could find. He's lucky a magpie didn't see him, but he wore all the jewelries that he could find because he needed to prove a point that like, he's like, I feel like we're going backwards. Like there are other things that we should be talking about, more important things that we should be talking about than like jewelry. And he's totally right. You lot aren't concerned about the human rights conditions in the countries that you're going to go and um, race in, but you're concerned about a, a little earring, a little nose ring. Omar, um, well, get your priorities straight immediately. Immediately. And of course, I think it's so accurate that he described it as them going a step backwards because I feel like they're so resentful for all of the things that he made them do during um, 2020 with the whole Black Lives Matter resurgence. I think that they fucking hate his guts for, for all of that stuff. And I feel like because he hasn't, he's not winning, he hasn't won any races this season, right? So they're trying to basically kick him while he's down and they think he's down. But I feel like Saturn's kind of, Saturn is restricting him in a particular way. And I feel like Mars is placed somewhere at the moment that's maybe a bit restrictive for him. And the thing is, when these planets ease up on him, it's over for you, hoes, you know, it's over for you, hoes. And if by some reason, okay, he doesn't get his eighth world championship this year, I don't know necessarily if he might decide that, you know, he's going to continue or whatever. But sorry, I keep fiddling with my headphones because I need to get new ones because I can't hear myself properly. Should he decide that he's going to continue? Well, I think he's got a contract to 2023 in it. So he's going to get it one way or another. And I need Toto Wolf to buck up his ideas as well. Honestly, everyone's pissing me off. But like they are going backwards. They're trying to go back on all of the things that he made them do because they're like, we don't have to do it now. We had to listen to you when you were running things where you were the, the reigning world champion. We don't have to do what you say now. So in fact, we're going to make life difficult for you because I feel like they truly believe that Leclerc's got it in the bag or even Verstappen's got it in the bag. So they don't need to listen. And you know what? I hope that even if, even if, Hamilton does not win the championship this year. I hope that it's still a Mercedes that wins it because George Russell has been having some healthy, healthy races. And, and you know, he held out today during the Miami Grand Prix. He Well, yesterday he held out, um, waited for the safety car that came out. I think, when did the safety car come out? Did it come out because of Norris? No, yeah, I think it might've come out before that. No, I think it might've come out because of Norris. Um, and so he'd been doing laps and laps and laps. He did over like 30 something laps on his, um, the hard tires that he had from the beginning of the race and um, changed them when the safety car came out because obviously every, all the cars have to reduce their speed, right? So because that happened, um, it gives him enough time to go out, uh, go into the pit lane, change, you know, basically do a pit stop, change his tires and come back out and still have a, you know, a healthy advantage, fresh tires and just go for it. So he changed to mediums. I think he changed to, and he was, you know, fast on them. He managed to overtake Hamilton. They had a bit of a tussle at one point, just a minor one. But it's interesting listening to the commentators already trying to create drama between them. Like, oh no, what do you think the team will do if it's a case of Russell, um, you know, being faster than Hamilton and Hamilton needing to move out of the way? Do you think that? Of course they will. Of course they will, because they're a fair team. If for some reason Hamilton's car is not set up enough to be faster than Russell's, then if Russell is catching, gaining on him and can overtake him, then of course that's what's going to happen. Why are they going to tell him to wait behind Hamilton? Why would they do that if, if nobody's mad? Honestly. But I feel like, like I was saying about the FIA, human rights violations, your eye is not opening. Your eye is not opening to see human rights violations. But what can you see? You can see Yering falls. It's so ridiculous. Like, do better. And they, of course, like I said, they are going backwards because they feel like they don't have to honour anything now because as far as they're concerned, you're not winning. So they can do what they want. But I basically appreciated the pettiness that Hamilton brought out in that situation. He went into his motor home and he said, I will pack on these, I will pack on these watches. I will pack on all of these things today to make a point. That is the kind of pettiness. That is what you need to tap into because I promise you, this season is not about love and light, Lewis. It's great that you've learned all of the things that you've learned and, you know, you're doing Zen and you're doing baby boy. Fine. But you have to show them that you also are a mad person 
Because I know that you are. You're a Scorpio rising. You're a mad person. Like, I'm a mad person. Me too, I know. I've got a freaking Scorpio stellium. I know madness when I see it. I know, I know my own people when I see them. I know my village people when I see them, right? And you're my, and you're my village person. So show them, show them. Like if nothing else, if you're, if you're not, if it's a case that the W13 isn't going to do what we need it to do this season and you're not going to show out on the track, my G, show out in the, show out in the press conferences, show out, like let them know. And I've, I feel like it's already been done anyway, because he's saying certain things that need to be said. And also on that note, shut the fuck up, Helmet Marco, and shut the fuck up, Jensen Button. Why don't you just shut the fuck up? Anyway, back to what I was saying. So with regards to the Miami Grand Prix, um, it was a race that took place. Um, Hamilton said that he felt like they need to do a bit of work on the chicane. Like it's good that they are, you know, doing all the things that they're doing. Like it's a good circuit to race on, but he does feel like they need to um, fix the chicane because you could see like the drivers were nervous, not just because it was a new track that they hadn't, you know, Formula One hadn't driven on because I think like they use it for like NASCAR or something. They, um, but yeah, there was just a lot of nerves basically. So um, qualifying was interesting. Um, unfortunately for Russell, he finished 12th in qualifying because they, that's another thing I don't get with the Mercedes engineers. Like you've seen that his car is working well. He did well in FP, was it FP3 or FP2? Russell did well with the setup that you had on a car. Why the fuck would you go and change it? So then, then he's ending up 12th. Like, no. Nah. Everyone's mad. Clearly, everybody's mad. So, um, the starting grid. So, um, after qualifying, Leclerc got pole position. Sainz was second. Verstappen was third. Perez was fourth. Bottas was fifth. Hamilton was sixth because he had a pretty decent Q3. Uh, Gasly was sec- seventh. Lando eighth. Lando Norris. Tsunoda ninth. Um, Lance Stroll tenth. Alonso was 11th, Russell was 12th, like I said, Vettel was 13th, Ricardo was 14th, Schumacher 15th, Magnussen 16th, Joe 17th, Albon 18th, Latifi 19th and Ocon 20th um, because I don't, did Ocon, I don't think Ocon finished. So Leclerc had pole position and you'd think with the Ferrari that he was, um, you know, he'd have a good chance, but it just seems like the Red Bull car, when it's not breaking down and suddenly going night, night, it's pretty great on a straight line. Like it's pretty fast in a straight line. So, you know, uh, Verstappen overtook Leclerc rather quickly in the race and he kept that lead for the, you know, for the majority of the race. And, you know, the thing about um, Verstappen, the thing about Red Bull at the moment is that like when the car is working, it works well because the races that they are able to finish, they win, I think. Or, you know, at least they do really well podium, them kind of things there. But the thing is, we can't even trust that your car's going to finish because even during qualifying, the car was doing scrum, scrum. The car was already doing scrum, scrum, even do, during qualifying. And at one point, Perez was saying that his car lost power. And they were like, oh, there's a sensor issue, but you'll be fine. Make it through. Why, why is the car having sensor issues? Why is, and he lost, he lost quite a bit of power, but it wasn't, he was still able to carry on. It all worked out for him. Um, and I do feel like, yeah, like Hamilton was saying, I feel like the strategy is fucking them at the moment, but you know, there are larger forces at play basically. And you know, I'm not there to help. And I, Lord knows, unless I chat shit, I truly believe, and I could be chatting shit, always bear in mind that I could be chatting shit, right? But I truly believe that the race that I'm at, he'll make podium. I would believe that the race that I'm at, he would at least win or that that he would win, but at least he will make podium because I bring the energy that you have to have an energy to to counteract all the scrum scrum energy that's around. But that's just my view. And maybe, you know, that's just from my like narcissistic perspective. Anyway, the driver standings um, are now Leclerc is on 104 points. Verstappen is on 85 points, so not too far off him. Perez is on 66 points. George Russell is on 59 points. Um, Carla Sainz is on 53 points. And Hamilton is on 36 points this season. Bottas is on 30 points. He started fifth, I think. Where did he finish? He started fifth. I think he finished seventh. 
Mm, I think he finished seventh. Um, Ocon got 24 points. Magnussen's got 15 points. So that, those are the drivers, uh, the driver standings. Currently, I believe that Hamilton will sort it. You know, I feel like we've got some upgrades coming for the car. Um, I'm hoping that by Barcelona, which is the next race, that they come in and maybe it makes a difference. I want it to make a difference for him. But this closer racing lark, this closer racing Higgy Hagger that they're doing, they're right up each other's butt cracks. Like they weren't joking when they said that the new regulations would mean that they could be closer racing in terms of all the drivers together or whatever, because that is what we're seeing, which is why it's also frustrating that if they could just sort out the W13, like if they could just sort out Hamilton's car, I think he'd be really able to kind of give these lot what they need to be given. But at the same time, I also find it very, very interesting that all of a sudden Max Verstappen knows how to drive without climbing up or climbing up on somebody's head. Because all last season, he was, oh, no, that's what you get for, that's what you get for not staying. <laughs> that's what you get. But now all of a sudden you can drive and not crash into someone because it looked like a dance, a very intricate, beautiful dance when he was doing bus boss with Leclerc when they were over, trying to overtake and all of that stuff. So that means that you know how to drive properly. But when it was Lewis, you just had a different type of energy. But I'll say this and people will be like, you don't know Formula One. You're just talking. You're just talking, you neg nog. Go suck out your mothers, you idiots. Um... But anyway, so the team standings are Ferrari's on 157 points. Red Bull is on 151 points. Mercedes AMG is on 95 points. And I got to say, you know, it's Russell that's bringing in a lot of those points. McLaren 46, Alfa Romeo 31. Alpine uh, 26, Alfa Tauri 16, Haas 15. Aston Martin 6, Williams 3. You know what? For all the jokes that I made about Haas This season has really helped them All this closer racing, new regulations Higgy Hagar has really, really helped them Because look, look They've got 15 more points than they had last season Ha! So, you know, things are working out for them Clearly But um, yeah, I just I just want to see some changes I really This season is hard to watch I'm happy for George Russell um, but I don't think you'll be able to use the same tactic over and over and over again where you're waiting and praying for a safety car. Fam, drive in it. I feel like you're driving well, but just drive in it. Stop waiting for safety car, praying for safety car, drive and 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 bet on your driving. Don't bet on a safety car. Don't bet on somebody else fucking up for you to then, oh, I now can go and change my tires. Like you don't, I'm glad that you're lucky, but you don't want your career to just be based on luck is all I will say. Um, and um, Jamie Chadwick from the W Series, she won her race um, and she's the reigning champion. So good on her. Um, I think that's pretty much it for Start Your Motors. I don't think I had much else to say. It's just all very somehow. Um, no, I was going to actually look at that. I didn't even say how the race is finished, did I? I was just talking like a talker. Um, so I did the driver standing. So in terms of the, oh, why are they showing us this? Oh, most podiums in Formula One, Lewis Hamilton, 183 podiums, Michael Schumacher, 155, Sebastian Vettel, 122, Alain Prost, uh, 106, Kimi Raikkonen, 103, Fernando Alonso, 98, Ayrton Senna, 80, Rubens Barrichello, um, 68, Valtteri Bottas, 67, Max Verstappen, 63. Oh, so that means Max uh, Bottas is, uh, sorry, Max Verstappen is creeping up. Oh yeah, he's definitely going to pass. Verstappen's definitely going to pass um, Bottas in terms of most podiums this season. I mean, if his car finishes, he'll pass Valtteri Bottas's um, record so far. But do you know who he's not going to pass? He's not going to pass Hamilton. Okay, so um, we just keep that there. So you could do your most podiums if you like, won't change anything as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, so the top 10 for uh, Miami Grand Prix, the first Grand Prix in Miami. Um, first place was Verstappen. Uh, Leclerc came second. Carlos Sainz came third. 
Perez came fourth. George Russell came fifth. Hamilton came sixth. Bottas came seventh. And the thing is, you know, I've got to give it to Russell. I was just talking about him a moment ago, but he was in 12th place. He started 12th from qualifying. He started 12th on a grid and he managed to finish fifth. So he drove, you know, I'm not taking that away from him. I'm not trying to be harsh on him. I'm still kind of wary about him. I haven't, I'm still cautious of him. I still haven't like made up my mind completely about him, but I will give him that from 12th place to fifth. He really, really, really drove. Hamilton started what in seventh and he finished sixth. Unlucky. Um, but anyway, Bottas finished seventh, Ocon finished eighth, Alonso finished ninth, and um Albon finished tenth. So those are all the people that would have gotten points for that race, and Verstappen would have gotten an extra point for um getting the fastest lap as well. So all in all, you know, it is what it is. I hope that, well, I don't hope that. I was just about to lie. I was gonna say I hope it's consistent for Verstappen, but I don't hope that. I was I don't hope that. Sorry. You know, and I, I think about it and I think like if Hamilton's not going to be the face of this sport for some reason or other, who would I prefer? And based on who's, you know, the championship leaders at the moment, the current leaders, I would prefer maybe Leclerc. I still have my issues with him and how he was talking about gestures when it came to Black Lives Matter. I still feel like some of them give me anti-Black vibes, all of that stuff. But I think like if we're talking about somebody that has enough face to carry the brand, he's got a, a, a pretty face, you know, he's not clapped like certain other people. Um, so I could see that. And he's got enough appeal where, you know, he could get the fashion brands, he could get this, he could get that. It will never, ever, ever, ever be on Hamilton's level, but he could do something, you know, and I, I, in a way that I don't know if some of the other drivers can, but that's not me saying that all of you are clapped. I'm just saying that it's about having a combo of things is what I'm saying. Um, and he's got a good car at the moment. So let's see how all of that, like, you know, let's see how that plays out for him. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see anyway. We'll, you know, we'll see, we'll see when we get there. Um, and I think that that's pretty much it, you know, until you get me to a race, we're gonna keep having these issues because I'm a star, you know, I shine bright, shine bright like a diamond. Um, I think, yeah, I know. Actually, another thing I was going to say is that I'm kind of disappointed for Hamilton because for a long time, he's carried the sport on his back, you know? In, in recent years, he's carried the sport on his back. And so you'd think like when they're now starting to slowly break America, because they've really kind of struggled to get Formula One to pick up in America. Now it's like slowly they're starting to break America. And then his car isn't doing what his car needs to do. That's frustrating to me because he deserves it. For all the work that he put in, he deserves it. And like I said, again, we've got to see how this plays out. He's Scorpio rising. We're going to have that uh, eclipse in Scorpio, which will be his first house. So I just want to know what that means. But I'm sending him all the good vibes. Doesn't give a shit who I am, but I'm sending him all the good vibes and I hope it works out. George Russell, behave yourself. Keep driving. Don't rely on luck. Verstappen have absolutely nothing to say to you. Not even congratulations. Um... It was funny, Carlos Sainz made a face when they were being interviewed and the, um, I can't remember who was talking to them, kept calling them baby, baby. And you can see that they're not used to talking to black American men because when he was heard baby, he, no, no. Um, oh, and I didn't mention that. Um, no, of course, it doesn't fit into this segment, but Real Housewives of Atlanta is back. And of course, I was watching it. So wanted to say that. Anyway, let's leave it there for Start Your Motors. And I will just jump to my uh, straw of the week. I've only got one straw of the week. I know that lots of you have sent in letters, but I also want to go home because it's literally um, almost 3 a.m. I can't believe I'm just here doing this all for the love of podcasting. Really? Really? Ooh. So my straw of the week goes out to a school. Um if you haven't heard about it by but me saying that you've probably have heard i think it's a school in east london why does all of these things seem to happen in um, east london child q was in east london as um, east london as well was it not anyway an 8 year old black boy from east london was forced to clean his 5 year old sister after she soiled herself at an after school club 
um, a BBC investigation has revealed the boy who attended Greenleaf Greenleaf After School Club in Walthamstow. Okay, so it's not a um a school; it's an after school club. Um, of the boy who attended Greenleaf Greenleaf After School Club in Walthamstow told his mum he was made to clean excrement off his sister's leg in front of other pupils, despite toilets being nearby. A staff member reportedly said, I'm not cleaning her. She's your sister. You clean her. According to the mother, their mother said the incident, um, well, according to the mother, their mother said the incident was humiliating and racist, saying that it was an example of the adultification whereby black children are perceived to be older than they are. And that is true. So Greenleaf After School Club, I hope you get shut down. I hope you get shut down. You can go suck out, go suck out for an eternity. You horrid people. He's eight years old. Like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? What does he know about that? Like caring um, in that way for his sister and cleaning poo off her. Is that not what you your job is? Okay, fine. You're like, oh, well, she's, you know, pooed on herself. While it might not be pleasant, that is for you to do. You are the child care specialists, are you not? You are the ones who are meant to be safeguarding. Where is the safeguarding for black children nowadays? Where is it? Where has it ever been? I'm saying nowadays, like we've ever had it. When will there be safeguarding for black children? Like, why is an eight-year-old cleaning a five-year-old poo? Yes, that's his sister, but that's not his responsibility. The parents, her, the mother put them in your care. But you wanted to humiliate him and her in front of the other pupils. And you did that. Close Greenleaf After School Club immediately. All the authorities that have that can do that, shut it down immediately. Because that is not a safe place for children to be clearly. And she wasn't wrong about the adultification of children. If that was an eight-year-old, a little eight-year-old white boy, you're not going to make him do that. To, uh, for his sister You're not Because you'll be like Oh he doesn't know What he's doing We'll clean her Oh she shouldn't have done that da, 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 da. You'll get on with it Why won't you let Black children in this life Have peace It will be you Who doesn't have peace Black children must have peace By fire and by force It will be you Who does not have peace Because how wild How disgusting How how messy Messy maybe not But you know But well yeah messy It's wild It's wild And I just And I it's very, it's a very simple suck your mum, suck your mum. All of you the people that were working that day, you people that run there. I, as a mother, I know how I feel about putting my child in the care of other people. And I would have slapped you up. I tell you that I would have slapped you up. So all that we can really say now is that you need to suck out and there needs to be repercussions for your lack of care in this situation. And I definitely think what should happen is that your after school club should get shut down because you don't deserve to have it because you don't deserve to have nice things. And it doesn't even seem like it was very nice in the first place. I mean, it's called Greenleaf. Um, so it sounds like um, it sounds like Lady May was involved somehow because she, you know, she was very, very nasty, very, very nasty woman. But, you know, it's late. And that's all I'll say on the matter. I very much want to now drive home and possibly get into my bed. Um, and I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Like I said, the live show is on the 25th of September. That's Sunday, 25th of September. I'll be making more announcements as we go. Get ready to get your tickets very, 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 very soon. Um, yeah. Send your letters to SYM, your tarot questions, all of them things there to SYM at kelechiokafo.com. You can follow me on at kelechiokafo at say your mind pod. Um, I think that's it. Okay, cool. Well, I've been Kelechi Okafor and this has been SYM, officially known as say your mind, unofficially known as what, what? That's right. Suck your mum. Anyway, I'll catch you next week. Peace. It's the Ben's Brunani woman is Baby boys, baby girls, you need to hear this Help you sit down, sit down, receive this realness Make sure your cup's ready for the tea, we are go sippy Yo, hard time scrolling for you